As our knowledge of the fossil record expands, so does our sense of awe towards the natural world. Paleontology is full of surprises, whether those be a sauropod the size of a whale, a filter-feeding ichthyosaur, or another record-breaking T-Rex. I first heard about this monstrous specimen when Reddit user SuperMasterpiece34 made a detailed post discussing not only its size, but how oddly obscure it was. If there was a T-Rex bigger than Scotty, wouldn't more people know about it? As it turns out, the specimen, affectionately known as Edward Drinker Cope, named after that guy, only had published measurements in the infamous Paul et al. 2022 study. That's the study that proposed that T-Rex was actually three separate species, and it was quickly shot down by just about everybody. Since the paper suffered such an ignominious fate, it's no surprise that few people realized that it actually contained valuable measurements of more than two dozen T-Rex femurs. Femur circumference is a useful point of information to collect when the remains of an individual are highly fragmentary. It's widely regarded as the best way to estimate weight when volumetric models aren't available despite its high error range, since it associates the thickness of the femur with how much weight it could reasonably support. Compared to volumetric models, it seems to underestimate the mass of bipeds and overestimate the mass of quadrupeds, but it's still a helpful point of comparison when it comes to overall size. With that disclaimer, let's talk about E.D. Cope, the beast that just might be the biggest theropod ever discovered. Cope was discovered in 1999 by Bucky Durflinger, here pictured with Gandalf. Bucky also discovered the T-Rex specimen known as Bucky. Wonder where he got the idea from. Cope was buried in the Hell Creek Formation, a geological area known for its incredible mosaic of late Cretaceous megafauna, and is still at the Black Hills Institute in South Dakota. Cope's material consists of a maxilla, dentary, ectopterygoid, angular, other skull bones, some vertebrae, some ribs, and the femur highlighted by Peter Larson. As far as I'm aware, only the femur has been measured. While it's not exactly a complete picture of the animal, it's good enough to give us a general idea of what a beast it was in comparison to other T-Rex specimens. Sue's femur is 580 millimeters thick at its narrowest point. Scotty's is 590 millimeters. And Cope's is a whopping 630. A massive difference when it comes to a crucial weight-bearing bone. We can use that to calculate a potential mass, keeping in mind that according to Persons et al. 2019, femoral circumference has a 20% margin of error. Our results won't be precise, but they will be within a realistic range. Big shout out to Random Dinos, the Theropod of Discord server, my stats professor, and my mechanical engineer cousin for helping out with the math on this one. When plugging in Cope's colossal femur into the formula, you end up with 10,626 kilograms, with an error range of 8501 to 12,751 kilograms. That's absurdly huge! And here's the kicker. Limb bone alimentary tends to underestimate the mass of bipeds, as we can see with Scotty. Using this equation with a Canadian giant gets 8,870 kilograms. But volumetric models are considered to be more accurate when significant portions of the skeleton are available, as is the case with more complete specimens like Scotty and Sue. The most recent volumetric calculation for Scotty, Dan Folk's 2023 estimate, gives a 10.4 ton mass. That's about a 17% increase by weight over allometry from the same specimen. So a more likely mass for Cope, when taking into account Alimentary's tendency to underestimate bipeds, is 12,458 kilograms. How long would Cope have been? Well, assuming it had the same proportions as Scotty, about 13.13 meters at 12.4 tons. That's still shorter than the higher estimates for the Gigantosaurus dentary owner, but over 2 tons heavier and much more reliable. Now keep in mind, Cope is a relatively incomplete skeleton at 10% bone count these size estimates are assuming that the rest of its skeleton is as proportionally large as its femur. Its femur length is also slightly shorter than Scotty and Sue, but that's not nearly as reliable a predictor of mass as femur circumference. Scaling isometrically from femur length, you'd still end up with a 9.5 ton animal, but that's quite a low ball compared to techniques that are mathematically more accurate. Even using the femur circumference formula that's known to criminally undermass bipeds, a 4 ton Mapusaurus, come on! Cope was considerably bigger than Scotty. So what kind of ecological role would a monster like this fill? We know that T. rex engaged in ontogenetic niche partitioning, which means that as its morphology changed with age, the prey it took down would have changed as well. Younger individuals were speed demons that likely hunted smaller, faster prey, while the adults were predatory behemoths that faced off against ceratopsians and chylosaurs and giant hadrosaurs. Cope may have been the biggest predator in its area, exerting influence over a large territory. It could have used its size to intimidate smaller tyrannosaurs into giving up their kills, or even taken on prey that most members of its species wouldn't have dreamed of, like exceptionally gigantic hadrosaurs that would have provided food for weeks. 
Cope would have been relatively slow at such a titanic mass, and it likely used as many ambushing opportunities as possible when it hunted. Imagine a predator the size of a house stalking you at night, tracking with vision as sharp as an eagle's and a sense of smell as keen as a bloodhound's, with padded feet making its footsteps as silent as death. For now, at least, it looks like T-Rex has a new king, and its title as the biggest megatheropod now has a comfortable lead of about 2 tons. For perspective, a Giga would need to hit 14.3 meters in order to match this mass. Cope was an absolute monster, and the rest of us just need to, well, cope. But he might not be on the throne for long. Paleontologist Steve Clausen has teased that the specimen Bertha, which he states to be the largest T-Rex, should have a paper coming out by the end of 2023. Whether Cope or Bertha will end up reigning supreme is anyone's guess, but you know where to find out, right here on the Vivid End. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to stay updated on cutting edge paleontology news and analysis. Join the Vivid End Discord server with the link in the description and join the channel for various perks, including shoutouts, emojis, badges, and early access to videos. If the idea of a 12 ton T Rex is exciting, comment your thoughts and share this video with your friends. I'll see you next time.